So let's talk about Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law has to do with springs. All right, well, what's the deal with springs? Well, springs have a restorative force. So that means that if I pull on them, they try to pull back. They want to be a certain length. It's called their relaxed length. So if you pull on them, they're gonna pull back and that's because they're springy, right? So a larger distortion, the more that we stretch it, the more of a force that we need to do that. Now the force that we're gonna pull with is the same as the force that the spring is gonna pull with when we're, we've got it at rest because then it's in equilibrium. So I pull it and I keep it there. The force that I'm applying is equal to and opposite to the force that the spring is applying. So Hooke's law says that that force is proportional to how much I stretched the spring. All right, so F equal KX. X is the length of the spring now minus its length when it's relaxed and nobody's pulling on it. K is a constant called the spring constant, and it just depends on which spring we're talking about. If K is really, really, really big, then that means that the spring is very rigid. So you should think like car shocks or those springs that, uh, that hold up like a swing outdoors. A really, really, really small spring constant means that the spring is really loose, really easy to pull on. You should think like a slinky or something like that. All right, so let's do some problems. Oh, first off, the direction decreases X. It acts to make X smaller because we don't want any distortion at all. It wants to be its relaxed length. So for that reason, F, the force, is negative KX. It's the opposite of k times x. All right, the magnitude is just proportional, but the direction is opposite because it wants x to be smaller. All right, so let's do an example. A mass m stretches a spring a distance x. So you should think a spring like this hanging. I hang a mass m on it and it stretches it a distance x. And I want to know how far will 3m stretch it? All right, now we don't have any numbers in this problem, but we don't really need them. Look, 3m is going to give a force, its weight, of three times as much as m. So if the force is three times as much, the spring constant is constant, it means x got to be three times as much. Easy enough. All right, let's go to the next one. This one's got some numbers in it. A 200 gram mass stretches a spring 50 centimeters. What is the spring constant? All right, the important thing, there's a couple of important things here. So first off, we're not in SI units. So we gotta change to SI units if we want everything to work nicely. So that's first thing. Second thing, we're gonna write down F equal KX. I don't care about the direction, so I'm not gonna write the minus sign. So what's the force? The force is not 200 grams. The force is mg. You gotta multiply by the acceleration due to gravity. So we'll have m.2 g I'm just going to use 10. It's 9.8, but whatever. You're going to use a calculator, use 9.8. I'm not going to, so 10. All right. Equals, and then I've got K, and then X. Just like that. Now, 0.2 times 10 is 2, right? 2 divided by 0.5. Dividing by 0.5 is like multiplying by 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and now all I need is a unit. Remember, when you're writing your answer, you always have to include the unit. Well, what's the unit? Well, F equal KX. F is a force, so it's newtons. X is a length, so it's meters. So K must be newtons per meter. And there you go. All right, let's go ahead to the last one. How far will a force of 6 times 10 to the 3 newtons stretch a spring with a spring constant of 3 times 10 to the 4 newtons per meter? All right, again. F equal KX. Now here I want X, how far, all right? So I'm gonna solve for X, X equal F over K, and then I just plug in. So it'll be six times 10 to the three over three times 10 to the four. All right, now as with any time you've got scientific notation, you always do the numbers first and then the tens. Six divided by three, two. 10 to the third divided by 10 to the fourth, that's 10 to the 3 minus 4, so it's 10 to the minus 1. What's the unit? It's x, everything's in SI units, so everything's in SI units. 
And now if we wanted to be all cool about it, we could write it as 20 centimeters, but two times 10 to the minus one meters is fine too. And that's Hooke's law.